All right, welcome back. Do you realize that I am, I am now sitting, I'm now sitting in a spot where one of the juniors once sang? That's absolutely true. Uh, our first sit-down guest on today's program is Leroy Neiman, who actually began a life in poverty, came from a broken home, was a high school dropout, had a totally undistinguished military career, and yet last year sold millions and millions of dollars in paintings. Let's find out how he was able to do that. Here is a terrific artist, a man who uses color in a brilliant way, Leroy Neiman. Thank you for coming. Have a seat. Now, Leroy, you're actually from, as I understand it, the Frogtown section of St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah. What's, what was Frogtown like when you were a kid? Uh, I was a depression, product of the depression. During that time, all the fathers of the neighborhood were unemployed, so they just hung around the street corners, around the house. It's a tougher time. But it was a good opportunity for me because we did, as a kid, you don't really feel that impact the same way that the adults yeah. do. And it uh, gave me a lot of time to draw, and I was a street kid. And uh, well, how did I you would find refinement in getting off the street, you might say, and drawing. And how did your, uh, this you had a couple of things into you. How did your, the, your, your, your buddies, the kids on the street, react to you drawing all the time? Not too favorably. No? But this is just a gift, a God-given gift you had the ability they to... They just took it that I was some kind of a special kind of kid, that that's what I like to do. And how did it you... Give me a certain power in the classroom. That you had that talent. What was the first thing you ever sold for money? The first thing was a... Uh, the really very first time was a, there was a grocery store in the corner of our house, Rieger's Grocery. And he used to put the prices out there with this calcimine, all the different... And prices were very important in those days. They were sure. Very, and uh, one time I said, I can uh, do that for you. You could give me a dollar or something like that, whatever it was, 50 cents. Or, and so I made the, I put the like, tomatoes and I'd draw a tomato. And if it had pork, I'd put a pig there. And I drew all these different things, all the objects, onions. Mm. And, it was, it was, and then as it started getting more attention, each week they'd wait for my drawings. The neighborhood, I became a sort of a yeah. known character there. Then I started working in color, Thanksgiving turkeys in color and all that's fabulous. Now, what, what would you say to, obviously we have some students here, talented students from the Art Institute of Philadelphia, and, and, and even more important to the mother or the father who are watching right now, have a young child who maybe is drawing all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, art's a risky business. I mean, you could end up broke, living you know, no, in a little place, or you can end up making millions of dollars like you. What ad basic advice do you give to a parent? Well, I think the most important thing is the, the uh, kid, if he's going to cut it at all in the art game, has to be honest with himself. It's searching for the truth and doing it your way. Naturally, when you're, when you're a kid, when I was a kid, you imitate. And then you have, then as you go out of imitation, you go toward influences. You start looking at more sophisticated art, and then you pick out the artists that you're going to extract the most from, that you like. And then slowly, if you... Just drill and keep working and try to do it your way, it'll arrive if you're lucky. One of the things I think when people think of Leroy Neiman, they think of you as, uh, as a, a spectator at the great events of the world. And yet <laughs> you describe yourself as a street artist who's more interested in, in, in painting the hot dog vendor than, than, than the star. Well, that, uh, sports are not my only expression. I know that. What are some of the other things that you've gotten into other than sports? And then we'll look at some of your things. From well, at the moment, I'm painting a large canvas in New York of the beach at Honolulu, Waikiki Beach. You were forced to go there to do this painting. Well, I have all those hearts. Against your will, you and had I spent to get the, on the plane. I spent the summer on the Riviera, and so I did paintings around the beach at Cannes and things like that. Hey, me, you're an artist, and you haven't been to Philadelphia very much. And you came in on the train oh, this fabulous. morning. You got down to Channel 3. The first thing you did was you wanted to go for a walk at about, what, yeah. 8.30 this morning. How did the city look? Oh, it's spectacular. It was such a beautiful day anyway. But at Independence Hall, no, I'd never seen it before, just pictures, photographs and stuff. The only time I come to Philadelphia, I come down for a fight or a basketball game. I go to the Spectrum or a football field or something like that, then I get out of town. Well, now we have to bring you back more often, right? I think it's just... What are you going to do the rest of the day in, this, in town here? We're going directly from here to the Museum of Fine Art, and then we'll have a nice lunch and... Head back to New York. I've well, got to go to a party tonight. We have to get you back here to sit and sketch uh, in, in the Penis Hall. Let's look at some of your work, okay? Uh, first one up. Here we got. I'll hold it for you. Philadelphia's own. Got our image on there? Okay. Joe Frazier. 
Joe Frazier. That was Joe Frazier in 1970. Hmm. You know, I've always liked Joe a lot, and so do a lot of other people. This is a great Ollie Frazier confrontation. This is an etching at Madison Square Garden, and both the people return to their corners before the bell and have their way of praying. That was the night Ali introduced that way. Now, this is introducing the fighters before that big fight. Joe in that corner and Ali from the back. Probably the greatest evening in the history of New York prize fighting. I think that's probably yeah. true. And you were there, as you've been for many great This events. is another great fight, not too long ago. Tommy Hearns on this side and, Mar and, and Marvelous Marvin Hagler. And that's how they looked when they were being in the, corner of the, in the center of the ring for the instructions before the bell. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the same two fellows midway. The fight didn't last all that long, but that's Hagler doing his, you know, doing a piece of work on that. Right. It's another Philadelphia product, uh, Sylvester Stallone. You've heard of him, right? And this, this, is the, uh, this is in Rocky IV with Dolph Lundgren when he's fighting the big Russian. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's a right, uh, all Sly's right hand. Mm. And here they are just facing one another at the center of the ring before the beginning of the fight to give you some idea of the scale. The sly isn't all that tall. I don't think he wants you to say that, Leroy. Well, he's tall enough. Oh, you know, okay. He's impressive. All right. Now, this is a drawing I did in Kenya about 15 years ago or so. But this is a drawing of a young lady, a Maasai, who the way, the more jewelry they put on, the more they're husband hunting. The more jewelry, that means the more available they are. So this is a typical she example looks of the kind world. of available. She's very ready. On that, on that very ready. Day, right? Do we have and anyone in the audience wearing a lot of jewelry today? You never know how these cultural things uh, we like translate. Like, this is a young lady that never wears any jewelry. Bo Derek. It's a drawing I did on her ranch and outside of Santa Barbara. You have a very tough job. Yeah, that was a hardship too. That drive up there. <laughs> uh, we we were we have members of the Art Institute of Philadelphia in the audience and. If I could find my mic, wherever I put the thing, I want to go ask. Oh, got it here. We have some questions for Leroy Neiman. Where are they? Let's see. Where are the, the, the folks from the school? Okay, here's a fellow over here. What's your name? Leroy Knight. Leroy. Uh, <laughs> I would right. like to know how much um, the most someone paid for one of your paintings. Most money that's paid? Mm-hmm. Well, they go pretty high. They. Uh, <laughs> I would say the the mostly about 450 grand would be the top price I ever got. You carrying that? But that isn't an everyday Leroy? price. No, I just have for that. That's the top one, but that's a good way to think of it from the top. Thanks. All right, someone else from the from the school with a question. No one? I thought you sure. I mean, you came down to see Leroy. Come on. Uh, now What's your you, name? Uh, Joe Hasnar. Yeah, Joe. Uh, now that you got your recognition and you've done all this work, do you ever find yourself getting bored, or what do you want to do? now for like you've you've made it no, now what no you can't get bored the world keeps changing you know if you you live in the world each day it's different and it's just it's equally exciting all the time do you have any more goals uh, that just you want to keep, pursue no, I, I never did have a goal actually just to do my work that's what i i just wanted to paint and draw and so i'm just going to continue to do it the what best would you I say can. your favorite subject is at this point in in, in your career Leroy? i'm heading it might be my age, it might be reflecting back to my youth, but the, the ladies are starting to interest me more again to draw. That's what every young artist starts out, uh, drawing his girlfriends and all that sort of thing, at that developmental point. And then you sort of drift off into, I couldn't say just practical matters, but other distractions that the world presents to you. In my case, it was all the excitement of sports, mainly. All right. One of the things I've observed that's been interesting about Leroy Neiman, because I've known him for a long time, is that Leroy will cover an event and he'll have a sketch pad and he just sit there and kind of draw us just like this. So what we did was, before, well, when the audience came in, we, we picked three people um, who said that they thought that they could draw and sketch the event of our timeout show today. That's a so, big challenge. And Leroy is going to uh, evaluate your work. Hi, what's your name? Eileen Rader. Eileen, where are you from? I'm from Wilkes-Barre, PA. Well, thanks for coming today. Have you, uh, what, uh, have you, uh, are you in uh, school for art? Or yes. No? And uh, what's your specialty? A commercial art ad design. All right, good. And you're going. We we'll got a sketch pad for you, and just going to sit there and draw. And what is your name, uh, my friend? Joe Gibson. Joe, where are you from? Hush, uh, Philadelphia, PA. Philadelphia, PA. Yeah. Heard of it, Joe? Um, <laughs> uh, and are you studying art right now? Yes. Okay, I'm at, good. Uh, what do you specialize in? Well, uh, I specialize in illustration and uh, 
painting technique. Okay, good. And over here, let me just, excuse me, across in front. Hi. Hi. Do you want to be like Leroy Nemo when you grow up? Yeah, he's definitely uh, something <laughs> look, somebody to look up to. All right, so we're going to give you a pad. What's your name? Uh, Brent Printer. Okay, and the object here is going to be this. You've got the entire rest of the show ahead of yourself, right? You're going to sit back, relax with a pad. Leroy will sit here and kind of observe what you're doing. We'll come back and check on the progress. At the end of the show, Leroy will pick the one he likes. Bill? How's that sound? Yeah. Could I interject a suggestion here about when you draw live on the spot, you're out in the open, you're in front of the people, and there's going to be an immediate, there's going to be an immediate audience to what you do. The most important thing to give you confidence is to show off how good you are. That's what the process of drawing live is. You're out there in front of the public and you're, show, you're doing your thing. It's okay. like an athlete on the, on the playing field. Fine. I have one last question. Enjoy it. One last question for Leroy. Was your mustache always like that? It's a virgin mustache, Bill. I've never shaved my upper lip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after this. We have time. All right, Leroy and Emer, we're going to ask you to take a critical look at these in just a second. But I mentioned before something in passing. You have a show in Russia coming up? Moscow, June, July of 88. Well, that's going to be an interesting yeah. thing. Have you ever displayed anything over there in the Soviet Union? I year? worked over there last summer at the, at the, at the games, the mm -hmm. Olympic games they had. I've been there several times. And which museum will it be in? I don't know the place yet. You think they'll be... It's in the hands of the Russian officials. Attaching <laughs> wires, bugs and things to the back it'll, of your uh, paintings? It'll be, a, it'll be a very, very meaningful experience. All right. Will you judge one of these three as the best? Uh, I'd like to. It's a it's a dead heat where I'm concerned. I don't like to take it upon myself. All right, well, I, we'll I'm, I, I favor this young man particularly because he went after you in his next drawing. But okay. I like them all. I think they all. Do have you have any others here you want to show, Joe? The one he just did. Wait a second. That's not the most flattering picture of me no, I've ever not, seen. But you know, got to you got to realize, Bill, that these things are drawn up very close. It's sure. very difficult to draw up close. You got to. Okay, let's take brain. a look at Eileen. Yeah, that's Eileen. And Brent's on the end. I'm just going to go like this, the audience. The drawing of you, Brent, is pretty good. You know? the, the one that yeah. you like the best. How many are in favor of Brent? <laughs> How many are in favor of Eileen? <laughs> and Joe? <laughs> it's a dead heat, everybody. You get, all get yeah, I think little so. gifts, free passes to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Poor Leroy still has to pee at the pay to get around here in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Leroy, thank you very much for coming down and being with us, and we'll return right after this. Alan Zweibel, original Saturday Night Live writer and Thurber Prize winning author of The Other Showman, says, The Adventures of Spike the Wonder Dog is so smart, witty, and inventive that I had to keep reminding myself that I didn't write it. 